Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be here in JIRCON 2022, and I hope that you all have a wonderful day ahead. Greetings from the opposite side of the globe, from North, Northern Europe, from Latvia. And uh, it's dark outside right now. It's 9 p.m. in the evening. It's late, but still, nevertheless, we are ready to talk about reporting. And I am happy to talk about reporting in any time because I am doing that on a daily basis in EZBI as a support consult consultant for more than seven years. And today we will talk about reporting. Please, during uh, my presentation, ask your questions in chat, in the chat area. My colleague, colleague Martins will either answer them or collect them to answer uh, on them at the end of the presentation. And I will answer them then. But no, what we are doing today and what we will do during this presentation. Uh, I will introduce with EZBI those who are not familiar with, with it. And then the majority of, the, of, of this presentation, I will do a live demonstration. We will create reports. And at the end of the presentation, we will cover the more advanced things, but only a summary. So let's start. So what and why is EBI? Uh, for those who doesn't know EZBI, a few words about what EZBI is. EZBI is a business intelligence tool for reports and charts. Um, and EZBI has built-in integration with JIRA and Confluence. Why I emphasize two words, business intelligence and built-in integration with JIRA and Confluence. Business intelligence tools allow of you not only to create uh, template reports, but explore your data, slice and dice, find uh, extreme values, compare data from different angles. And why it's important that uh, this uh, easy BI have integration with Jira and Confluence built in integration, because we know uh, how easy how Jira works. We have been in Atlassian community more than 10 years. And therefore, we know uh, what Jira customers want, how Jira works, what is Jira data model. And we can provide you with a tool that is very fluent with Jira. Either more, um, Easy BI have integration not only with main Jira programs like Jira software or Jira service management, but also with most popular marketplace applications, Zephyr Scale, uh, Zephyr uh, Squad or X-Ray for testing, time tracking applications like Tempo and other. And EZBI is wherever you are. EZBI works uh, smoothly on all uh, deployments on Jira Cloud, Jira Server, and Jira Data Center. For those who are thinking of moving from server to data center, we also uh, support any migrations from server to data center, to Atlassian, uh, to uh, Jira Cloud, as well as between uh, Jira Cloud production and sandbox uh, sites. So EZBI is available. EZBI is flexible and uh, EZBI allows you to get closer to your data. So in my country, we say that it's better to see something once than to hear about it a thousand times. Therefore, we will do a, present, uh, we will do a live demonstration. I will show you how to create a report in EZBI. If we were in uh, one room right now, I would ask you to raise your hands who are project managers or who has been project managers. Me, I did that for several years in my previous company where we did software development. And I 
I'm pretty sure that the majority of you or a part of you are project managers, but those who are not, you can imagine. So as project manager, I usually want to see my project progress. Uh, and based on key uh, uh, metrics. And what we have in Jira, we have several, but we have resolved issues, resolution times, and logged, out, logged hours. So I want to create some project progress reports based on resolved issues and logged time, and to see some trends, to see some cumulative hours. Also, I want to see this information, information split, for instance, by users. So I could see how people work, how they engage with this project. And also I want to see some lists of issues with longest resolution time to work with those and to find where the blockage was. And vice versa, I also want to see some overviews of typical resolution times. So very different questions and all of them are based on a few basic uh, key indicators. And of course, I want to see it on one glance. Is it possible? Of course, if you create report one by one and tell your story with them. Okay, let's create, let's move to my demonstration environment. So we are here in Easy BI. Welcome, welcome to my daily workplace. This is Easy BI Record Builder. Uh, Easy BI creates reports based on imported data. We do that daily on a regular basis and automatically. And during this report, uh, during this uh, data import, we, uh, uh, we transfer um, uh, Jira data in dimensions and measures, which are main building blocks for Easy BI reports. All those grayish blocks are dimensions and dimensions are list of values. Uh, like all projects you have imported, users, issue types, priorities, issues themselves. And there is a specific dimension, it's called measures. And it, it contains quantitative values, like create number of created issues, number of resolved issues, average resolution days, etc., etc. So combining uh, dimensions and measures, we are creating reports. So let's start with the first one. We talked about project progress in time based on resolved issues and logged hours. If we talk about project progress in time, we should take time as something to put in rows. And in columns, we would use this resolved issues and logged hours. Let's start with resolved issues. We find issues resolved measure. We can see that there are several measures related to resolved issues, story points from resolved issues, subtask, number of subtasks which are resolved, but we will take the basic issues resolved. And the same we look for logged hours. Let's type in hours. And we can see that there are several time tracking uh, measures with hours, original estimated hours, remaining estimated hours, and logged hours. Okay, we can see the total values of them for all the time, and we can expand time. We can do it step by step, but we can also uh, select months. Level months, we can select other as well, but months is like very, convenient time period. As you can see, there are quite a lot of months, months here because there are three years. Let's add a filter by a year and select last year. Now we can see values split by uh, last year months, how many issues were resolved during each month and how many hours spent with, uh, during each month or how many hours were logged during each, each month. Those numbers are not static. You can click on them, drill through issues and see issues behind this number or 
in this case, all resolved issues during January 2021. And you can even go to JIRA directly from this. You can open JIRA page with this issue. So as I said, EZBI is integrated with JIRA. Okay, but uh, we asked for trend lines for cumulative hours. For that, we have added or standard calculations. You can add statistical values, percentages, cumulative sums, compare with previous periods, and draw a linear trend. Click and it's drawn. And for our spend, we will add cumulative hours, cumulative sum. Of course, we can stay here in table view, and table view is not boring. You can uh, make it colorful and, and highlight different values. But I guess in this case, move to some of the chart, uh, chart views. We will select bar charts in this case, but you can switch and find which suits you better in each particular case. Uh, and customize it. Let's make it vertical. And uh, yeah, color uh, color coding is very important to understand to uh, to see numbers uh, faster, to see information easier. So issues resolved is good, right? Let's make it green and linear trend. Let's make it green, but a bit lighter from the same color scheme. Or spent, okay. Yeah, they probably can be blue and cumulative hours might be bluish as well. Uh, we can see that we should move this area behind. We can go back to table view and put the right order of layers here. Also, what we can notice that we have two different types of measures. We have um, one measure that is uh, hours and the next one is in issues. So we need two different axes for them. So let's uh, set a uh, number of issues on a separate axis and linear trend of those hours as well. Not to miss something or we can name it each of axes. We are, we are already there. We can also add some labels, et cetera, et cetera. What we can do else, we can set to show darker greenish, darker green or in other color, uh, top values of uh, resolved issues. Let's find two months, two time periods with top resolved issues and make the color very dark green. So we can see there. Additionally, uh, we can set some filters on the report. You can do that in a table view, or if you see here in, 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 in chart view, we add projects as a filter and, and, and pages is the place where you can add filters. And so you can select one project or analyze all important projects together. Let's select project alpha. When you're ready, you save the report. Okay, you probably will uh, name it more uh, precisely as, as me today. So what else is good with, with those uh, chart views and uh, table views? You can also do uh, drilling from charts. So you can click here, drill through issues. Or if you have logged hours, you can also drill through workload. Nice, right? And you can expand, export it to Excel as well. And you can see there are uh, several numbers, several names, and I guess you would you are interested how this uh, those hours are split in total by those different users. We can do drill across option, which allows to split your number by another dimension, and I will do it by users. Hmm, I can see that during the August two thousand twenty one, Sandra was the 
uh, was contributed the more time for this project. But if I want to see it for all time periods, uh, then I would suggest you create another report based, based on this one, where you split logged hours by users. Let's go back to table view and create another report based on this one. Let's remove unneeded information because we will focus more on logged hours. Uh, and now we can split this hour spent information by logged hours, by logged uh, by users. So nice and easy. Uh, issue result is, is shown as total number as a context of the report, but logged hours are split by users. Hide empty rows and columns. And again, you can leave it in a table view, but you can go back to bar chart and uh, customize it. Make issues resolved, let's say, as a spline. And stack all other values uh, together. What you can see, in this case, we, we have a pretty much, pretty much users here. You can change colors in the same color scheme if you want to. But you, what you can see, for instance, you can see that Sandra started contributing this project only in last months of last year, while uh, Steve did only a few, probably a few uh, tasks in this project and logged hours only um, in, in, in some months uh, at the very beginning of the last year. And uh, Duncan did work during all the project uh, in, during the last year. So this is valuable information. And again, you can drill through workloads or through issues or split this information more and more by priorities, by issue types, et cetera, et cetera. But let's, but let's save as this report as a new one, logged by users, and save it to our, uh, to our uh, report uh, library. Now, we asked also for a list of reports where you can see uh, issues with largest resolution types. In this case, let's create a new report, empty report. And if we want issues in rows, then we need issues in rows, move, it, move them there. We again add filtered by projects in this report and uh, add measures we are interested in. So we are looking for average uh, resolution days. We can see it in days or work days. We also probably want to see those same uh, logged hours. And in this case, probably add original estimated hours to compare. Um, then we want to see more information about each particular um, issue. We want to see issue assignee. We want to see issue resolution date. And we want to see issue type. OK. What we can see? We can see that there are some values visible, but metrics with starting with issue are not visible. Those are issue properties. They display information only for particular issues. Let's find again our issue, uh, our demo alpha, and expand issues. When we see issues here in rows, the information uh, appears as well. Okay, we need only issues, and let's filter uh, those issues by last year as well. You can do it also in this way by uh, date columns. And December, okay, this is last year as well. As I said, we need only top of longest issues because as you can see, the list is very large. For that, if we use average resolution days as an indicative value, we can uh, find top 10, top largest 10, values in this list. So those are 
10 issues with longest resolution days. We can add uh, total values to see log hours and uh, original estimated hours for those 10 issues. So I know we can go to this same issue, go to, to JIRA and look what happened, why it took so long time to resolve it, and why there is not even logged hours or not uh, estimate. Or we can ask our colleague Monica, who was issue assignee, and it's epic, yeah, therefore probably there is there are not logged hours and, 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 and original estimated hours, but we can ask Monica why it took so long to resolve this particular issue. So uh, this, those issue lists or user lists usually are uh, more uh, convenient to, to, watch, to, to see in table views. So let's save the report, issue list, list longest resolution time and save it. Let's check how much time I do have. Do I have? Okay. Um, and last, I want to show is how to create a report based on uh, to see the overview of uh, resolution times. For that, we have interval dimensions, resolution interval dimension. We add it in rows. Again, add our project in columns. No alpha expand, get my issues resolved measure, hide empty, open columns, and move that. And to, uh, and we want to show it in a pie chart, but pie chart would be, would have too much slices. We would have uh, top percentage of uh, resolution times will be shown here in the report and all other intervals would be shown in one row. So we are back to pie chart and add name labels and values. So this is overall how many uh, issues were resolved in up to 30 days, up to 60 days, up to 90 days, and the uh, smallest values, smallest, uh, the intervals with, with, with uh, smallest number of resolved issues will be shown together in all others. Let's save this report as well. Okay. When we have created those reports, we can put them together in a dashboard. Uh, we are creating a new progress, uh, progress dashboard. Add there all those reports one by one. See how they look. Probably we, sh we should uh, move uh, this first one on the left side, the next one on the right side and see totals and see values. We can always, uh, if we uh, want to filter by our project, we, we, we have filters in all reports. We can put it on a, as a common page a filter. So when we select here a project, all reports are shown for this project. Uh, let's save this dashboard. And dashboards, the same as reports, are fully drillable. You can drill through issues, drill across issues, and see those numbers uh, split by values. You can switch back to reports, to table views. So those are fully uh, interactive uh, reports. And when you have created your reports, you can share them in JIRA. So this is a JIRA dashboard, and you can see you can go back to EasyBI. Again, you can use JIRA gadgets. Okay, you can add either a dashboard or a particular report. Or progress dashboard you can set some options and this report is there and again this report is clickable drillable and customers can and, and your colleagues can see those reports so 
we did our demonstration. And I will check my time. Okay, we have 10 more minutes. Oh, uh, yeah, we do not have time to show all options. Just to keep you engaged, a few more visualization op options you can uh, see, uh, you can use in EDBI. So we started uh, report creation with a table view. And tables are not boring. You can use uh, formatting options to make different, to highlight different values, or as in this example, create heat map chart. Uh, for instance, in this case, to find most active days, like Tuesdays in July or Wednesdays in August. Or you can uh, see add different uh, indicators, visual indicators to show something about the row. In this report, you can see created versus resolved issues. And using margin formatting, you can add either arrow up, arrow up to show if uh, issues created are more than resolved. So you created more than resolved during that time period, or everything was nice under control and you resolved more than created. Or you can, using the same conditional formatting, add sparkline charts, sparklines to your uh, table views. So as I said, tables are not boring. Of course, most popular are bar charts and line charts and timeline charts, because there you can combine bars and other chart types. You can compare values from different metrics, as in this case, planned hours with locked hours, and to see again in which month, months you plan more than actually uh, logged or vice versa. Or uh, you can make it more uh, specific if you want to emphasize some specific issue type, for instance, to show not only total numbers of hours spent, but split by stories and bugs. Uh, and as you already saw in my uh, demonstration, you can combine different chart types in your uh, report to show a context of this particular report. Then we have a scatter chart, which shows uh, uh, relations between two or three metrics. In this case, it shows average resolution days uh, in relation with issues resolved over time. So uh, in a scatter. Or using bar chart option bubble, you can uh, draw those bu bubbles together with trend lines. This is, those are quite specific uh, chart types, but uh, they tend to be popular. Uh, one of uh, versatile chart types is gauge chart. First of all, it does its main job to show how far we got to do something. So if our limit is uh, 614 created issues, from them 448 are resolved, then our gauge is almost bright green. And if all issues would be resolved, then the gauge would be bright green. Uh, but also we can use gauge chart for a summary report. If you have some key indicators like total of open issues, uh, resolved cumulative or resolved issues, and some sparkline trends, then we can use gauge chart option only values to show those values big and bright. Um, and uh, gun charts are always popular, of course, because they show our project plan and how things are going. So you can uh, create that based on issue start, start, start and end dates and some progress values and to see visibly if you are if you have resolved task if you are in progress and you still have time or you are overdue and see it in different uh, time periods weekly monthly quarterly depends on your project uh, timeline so we have more we have mock chart and 
probably I for the some we have also a map chart to show information on, on, on maps and pie chart we already saw and timeline which is very similar to line chart. Uh, one more thing before we uh, 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 summarize things. Sharing is caring. I already sh uh, showed you uh, that uh, you can create reports and share them on EZBI dashboards, and then you can share them in JIRA dashboards. But you also can subscribe to get those dashboards uh, as PDFs in your uh, emails in specified time. For instance, every Monday at eight o'clock, morning before your weekly uh, team meeting. Of course, those PDFs are not interactive, but still they have uh, bright charts and and and, well, and 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 tables. And you can also share those dashboards on wallboard if you have a large monitors uh, or screens in your office room then you can uh, show them on uh, screens. And if you have EZBI for Confluence app, you can share those EZBI reports also on Confluence pages, similarly as I showed you for JIR dashboards. And shared on Confluence pages, uh, those reports will be still interactive and you could drill into values and, 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 and see numbers behind any value. And we also like to share our experience. Uh, and we have collected a lot of them, a lot of reports in our demonstration account. You can go to Google and ask, find me easy BI demonstration account, and you will find it. And uh, yeah, uh, go there, find uh, examples and share them to uh, and, and uh, export them and uh, transfer them to your uh, instance. And you will get those reports with your data. And uh, just a few words uh, about what is still possible. We say that in easy BI, simple things are easy, but complex things are possible. No more about a few words about complex things. You can. Uh, analyze not only JIRA and Confluence data, but you can also import data from other data sources, from databases using SQL selects, um, or from other applications using REST API. Or you can upload uh, data files, Google Sheets or Excel files, and analyze this information separately or together with JIRA data. Uh, those who have already heard about EZBI uh, most probably have heard about uh, calculations there. Yeah, we can, one of main benefits of EZBI for those who want to go deeper in analyzing our possibility to create custom calculations. And uh, do not worry, you can start very easy, very simple, and then go in more complex uh, calculations. And there are more things to do, and uh, then the sky is only the limit. You can import issue links or pre-calculate your own uh, JavaScript custom fields or um, modify data during uh, data import uh, using the same uh, JavaScript. So if you are interested in EZBI and want to go deeper, uh, you can always uh, have our um, back, and you can always ask our questions. Of course, not only if you go deeper in advanced things, but also uh, for any questions. We are happy to answer and happy to tell about reports. So summary, what and why is EBI? EBI is simple and attractive uh, with a lot of standard options to explore and visualize data as we saw today in a demonstration. Meanwhile, EBI is powerful. We have this credo, simple things easy, complex things possible. And uh, we have, we are whatever, wherever you are, uh, we have the same functionality on server, data center, and cloud, but now cloud is first. And if you are on cloud, then all the features and everything new first will be deployed on the cloud. So thank you for patience. 
And now time is for now it's time for questions. Martin, it's your questions. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Ilze, what this was really great presentation. I'm, I'm always excited what you can do with EasyBI. There were a couple of questions I noticed, and it would be great if you could show how you can uh, uh, start from the documentation page and how you can find the demonstration library we, we, where we have a lot of good, useful reports. Some of the folks asked, uh, where is the library? Yeah. If we have some okay. good reports and how to copy them, uh, if they okay. want to kind of get them, yeah? If you can okay. show that quickly. Yeah. So let's start with documentation. Docs is the uh, Sorry, can you a little bit zoom in? Zoom, uh, zoom in. Yeah. So it's a little bit. No, um, yeah. Probably. So first, the easiest way to go to documentation is from the help, the question mark in uh, in Easy BI. Uh, this is Jira. What you are showing, Jira. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> I couldn't understand why I can't find the needed. The, again, this is the same. I was focused on the help button here. So in, of course, in Easy BI. You can find documentation link. So, and you can see the documentation here. The, I would say the most important part is learn more. Uh, there are uh, links to training videos we have created together with Atlassian uh, University. We created, uh, uh, we created introductionary, uh, not introductionary, but basic training set of uh, how to use, how to create reports in EZBI. And then we'll, we also create some additional videos. You can learn about them. You can learn about EZBI. And from there, you can find a uh, demonstration accounts. But as I said, you can just go to your favorite Google and um, EZBI demo account. Okay. Easy BI accounts. So, and then there are dashboards. There are several dashboards you can click through. You can see what I told about gauge charts as a summary report at the very beginning of dashboard. There is start simple uh, dashboard where we collected reports that doesn't require any uh, custom calculations or something else. They are created similarly as I did that by clicking. And when you are uh, interested in some report, you can go to the report and export definition. You can do that also from dashboards, export definition. Then you will have this uh, screen, copy the clipboard. This screen contains uh, this th those yeah, this code is a structure of the report. What should be in uh, rows, in columns, what measures are used, what color customization are applied, uh, but they do not contain actual data. So this is just the structure. Therefore, you can copy, go to your, uh, your EZBI, where you have your uh, analyze tab with your reports or without your reports, and import reports. Paste it, okay. There is some calculated member, that's okay. And the report is created. Now you open it and it's with your data. So you can select your projects, your issue types. This is in my environment. So this is way how to transfer reports from demonstration account to your account. In the same way you can do that for the wall of dashboard. So there would be, sorry, there would be click expert definition uh, for the wall dashboard, all reports. So you can do that as well. Yeah. While you are here, can you show uh, one uh, one person asked, how can we add descriptions uh, to the okay. wallboard or to dashboard? If you can quickly okay. show that, how you add that? Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay, I uh, open my report and there is a clickable comment 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 and uh, i add some text here i click here and i save the report you have to save it and if i go to the dashboard 
I see that this text appears here. And a similar way I can do that for the dashboard as well. Add description and add your description and save and save. Yeah. Yeah, great. Uh, there was also a question if we can add custom fields in report, like do we yes, support custom we, fields? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can do that. For that, oh, again, I will go back here. Uh, to, uh, for the, um, as I said, we import data from Jira and uh, we uh, select what information do we want from Jira because sometimes in Jira we have a gazillion custom fields because we have 500 uh, projects in our company and any project uses their particular, their own uh, custom field, et cetera, et cetera. So if we transfer all this information to EZBI, it would be a big chaos. So we say that in this account, I want to import particular information, a several projects, a several uh, custom fields from, from Agile, and then I can select uh, custom fields, available custom fields, which I want to analyze. And uh, for instance, color. And, uh, or I want to uh, analyze some custom fields from market for marketplace apps, tempo, tempo custom fields, Zephyr squad, X-ray custom fields. I have, as it is my test environment, I have very different uh, apps. Probably you have few of them. But yeah, you can select uh, in import options. Uh, you can select which custom field do you want to uh, import. Select to import them as dimension if this is a listed value or as measure if it's date or quantitative value. And import data. As I have. Import. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, then those dimensions appear uh, uh, together with any other dimension uh, in the in the report builder. Probably we will see that. You can ask me more questions, Martin, while yeah, it's importing. Uh, if you could uh, quickly show, uh, while it's importing, if you could quickly show what are the options to publish EZBI reports like Jira or Confluence, where can we find that information if we want to publish EZBI reports? Uh, in documentation, uh, this uh, all information is uh, grouped by main functions, by data import, this we just did, analyze and visualize the main demonstration part and publish reports. So there are how to create dashboards, how to pub publish in your dashboards, as we did that, how to publish in Confluence pages, uh, subscription, how to publish with a public access token or on Valboard. So, this is in section published reports and documentation. Yeah, uh, I think we have still like two two minutes left for the questions. If you had, if you can show me uh, how to group issues by epics, there was a question how to calculate epics and yeah. see what is behind epic, like okay. stories, etc. Yeah, if you could quickly yes. show. Yes. Okay. That. Quickly, uh, if I imported custom field dimension color and I can use it as any other dimension and I can filter by projects and uh, and see those values. Uh, we, we had uh, result issues, et cetera, et cetera. As you see, I use this color dimension as any other dimension. I can combine it with time, with issue types, et cetera, et cetera. So this is how custom fields are used. About uh, epics. So we have issue dimension and issue dimension has hierarchies by issues like all in default hierarchy all issues are equal in subtask hierarchy issues are grouped by parents and subtask in epic hierarchy we have all issues by epics and there are epics and under epics there are stories and the stories there are uh subtasks so if we and if we add log hours oh, favorite and issue type type just to show you so we have this uh let's focus on this element on this issue on this epic so we have resolved 12 issues and 
in total 50 hours. We expand it and see all the stories or bugs that parent level issues and hours spent for each of them. And they are summed up to those 50 hours for ethics. And also we can expand this story uh, having a uh, three sub tasks, data tasks and test tasks and hours from test tasks are summed up to story. And, and, and I said this story summed up to hours spent. So this is way how we grow issues by ethics and under them. And if you have um, roadmaps, Atlas and roadmaps, then uh, advanced roadmaps, I'm sorry, then you can get this uh, hierarchy, which is in advanced roadmaps. If you, if you have features and programs and initiatives, then uh, this parent link is also important and you get more hierarchy here to grow up issues by higher level issues. So it's a very powerful thing, hierarchies. Thank you, Ilse. Great presentation. Uh, thank you all for the questions. Uh, it seems that we have uh, exceeded the time. We don't have any more questions. But guys, if you have something that you want to uh, uh, want to know about, we are in the booth of this JiraCon event. So please join our booth. We will try to yeah. help you. And we will have more time to uh, answer your questions there from the booth. So yeah, that's yeah. all for the questions I will be there, Martin. Martin should be here, I will be here. And if you have any questions more than support at easyda.com and we answering all questions. Simple and complex. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. <laughs>